let's take a look at phases of matter and phase changes. So we're going to restrict our conversation to the three common phases of matter, solid, liquid, gas. We're not going to worry about plasma, Bose-Einstein condensate, degenerate matter, all that cool stuff. But for a solid, a liquid, and a gas, if we think about this in terms of the molecular theory, in a solid, there are strong intermolecular bonds which keep them in a fixed position. Okay, and those intermolecular bonds are forces between molecules. And those forces keep those molecules in a fixed position. And they vibrate. Those molecules vibrate around that fixed position. Okay, so that's a solid. And from a macroscopic or a larger scale view, a solid is a material where it keeps a fixed shape. Okay, for a liquid, there are weaker intermolecular bonds. The molecules can move around, but they're still very strongly affected by the forces caused by nearby molecules. And the location of each molecule is constantly changing. They're moving around a little bit, uh, but they're still strongly affected by those neighbors. And from a macroscopic perspective, what that means is that a liquid will fill the volume of whatever container it is in, but its shape is not fixed like a solid is. For a gas, the intermolecular bonds are almost negligible. They're very weak compared to the other two phases, and the molecules within the substance are usually moving around at pretty high speeds in random directions, and the molecules are relatively far apart. And from a macroscopic perspective, a gas will fill whatever container it is in. Now let's think about what that means in terms of the kinetic energy and potential energy of the molecules for each phase. For a solid, the molecules are not moving very quickly on average. So that means that the average kinetic energy per molecule in a solid is relatively low. Now if we compare that to a liquid, the molecules have more freedom and they're moving around a little bit more. They have more random kinetic energy. So for a liquid, the average kinetic energy per molecule is higher than in a solid. And then for a gas, the molecules are moving around relatively quickly, and so on average the kinetic energy per molecule is high compared to a liquid and a solid. Now let's think about the potential energy. So the potential energy is related to the bonds. In a solid, the bonds are very, very strong. And in terms of potential energy, what that means is that there is a low potential energy in a solid. Uh, the way that you can think about it is that the solid is kind of in a low energy state. Everything is fixed and unmoving, so there's low potential energy. When we move to a solid, there's more potential energy. They are less fixed. Those bonds are not as strong. They're weaker bonds, and so there's more potential energy in a liquid than in a solid. And then in a gas, there's almost no bonds, and so there's a higher potential energy in that state. Okay, so what that means is that to go from one state to another, to say to go from solid to a liquid, we're changing the potential energy. You have to increase the potential energy to go from a solid to a liquid. And then to go from a liquid to a gas, you also have to increase the potential energy in the substance. Another way to say that is that you have to add energy to go from a solid to a liquid, and you have to add energy to go from a liquid to a gas. Then the question becomes, well, well, how much energy do you have to add? That's where specific latent heat comes in. Specific latent heat is the energy necessary to change the phase of one kilogram of substance. And an equation for this is L is equal to Q over M. Capital L is the variable that we use for specific latent heat. And Q, again, is the energy that's being added, and M is the mass of an object. We can rearrange this and get Q is equal to ML. From the first equation, we can get the units of specific latent heat. It's the units of energy divided by the units of mass, or joules per kilogram. And also notice that specific latent heat refers to a phase change. Well, there are different phase changes, so there are different specific latent heats. So for example, there is a specific latent heat of fusion. Specific latent heat of fusion refers to the phase change of solid to liquid, which is also known as melting. Specific latent heat of vaporization refers to the phase change of liquid going to gas, which is also called boiling. 
So let's try to put this all together as a graph. Let's say that I have a situation where we're heating a solid by adding energy at a constant rate. Okay, and we'll make a graph of temperature versus time. So keep in mind, we're adding energy at a constant rate. We're always pumping in the same amount of thermal energy into this solid. So okay, it starts out as a solid. So in the graph, it starts out at a relatively low temperature and as we add energy to it, well let's see, if we add energy to a solid, we're going to increase the kinetic energy at first. If we increase the kinetic energy, then we're increasing the average kinetic energy per molecule. Each molecule, on average, is going to be gaining energy. And those molecules are going to be moving around faster and faster as we pump thermal energy into this object. So the temperature will increase. Okay, and it'll increase and increase and increase, and then it'll reach the melting point. It'll reach the point where it can change phase. And it won't change phase all at once. The phase change doesn't happen suddenly. What happens is, it slowly transitions from solid to liquid. And as it transitions from solid to liquid, in other words, as it melts, the kinetic energy does not increase. The kinetic energy per molecule does not increase. Instead, the energy that you're adding to that substance goes into changing the potential energy. It goes into weakening the bonds between the molecules. So what that means is you're changing the potential energy of the substance and you are not changing the kinetic energy per molecule of the substance during the phase change. Yet another way to say that is that you're changing the potential energy, you are not changing the temperature of the substance during the phase change. So as it melts, the temperature doesn't change. And that takes some time. Okay, so during the phase change, the temperature is constant. Then, at the point that it's become all liquid, now there's no more change in potential energy to be had. You've all changed, you've changed everything to liquid. And so the temperature will increase again. The temperature will increase and increase and increase until it reaches the boiling point. And then it will go from a liquid to a gas. And during that phase change, again, you're not changing the average kinetic energy of the molecules, so you're not changing the temperature. Instead, you're changing the potential energy of the substance. You're changing the bonds. So during the boiling, the temperature doesn't change. And then, once it's become completely gas, then the temperature will change again. Now notice in this graph that I've drawn that the boiling took longer than the melting. And let's think about what that means. If the boiling takes longer than the melting, then that means it required more energy to boil the object than it did to melt the object. It took more energy to boil than it did to melt. The liquid to gas phase transition required more energy than the solid to liquid phase transition. What that means is that the specific latent heat of vaporization for this substance is greater than the specific latent heat of fusion for this substance. Because remember, specific latent heat of fusion refers to the energy necessary to change the phase of one kilogram of substance. Well, here it took more energy to change the phase from liquid to gas, so that means that the specific latent heat of vaporization is greater. It took less energy to go from solid to liquid, so the specific latent heat of fusion is lower. Now another characteristic of this graph is the slopes of solid, liquid, and gas are different. So the slope of the liquid is the highest during that uh, temperature increase, and the slope of the gas is lowest, and the solid is in the middle. So let's think about the meaning of the slope of this graph. The slope of this graph is a measure of the rate of change of the temperature. It's a measure of the rate of change of the temperature. So another way to think about it is, a greater slope of this graph means that the temperature changes more rapidly which means that, in a sense, it's easier to change the temperature if it has a greater slope. It requires less energy to change the temperature if it has a higher slope. So the liquid phase 
it's relatively easy to change the temperature of the liquid. And for the gas, the gas has a low slope, so it's relatively hard. It requires more energy to change the temperature of the gas. Well, that's related to the specific heat capacity. One way to think about specific heat capacity is that it is a measure of how difficult it is or how much energy is required to change the temperature of a substance. Higher specific heat capacity means that it's more difficult to change the temperature of the substance. So according to this graph, it was more difficult to change the temperature of the gas than it was to change the temperature of the solid or liquid. It required more energy to change the temperature of the gas a certain amount. So, because the gas has a low slope, it has a higher specific heat capacity. And because the liquid has the greatest slope, it has the lowest specific heat capacity. In other words, the liquid changes its temperature very rapidly. It's relatively easy to change the temperature of the liquid, which means that it has a low specific heat capacity. So this graph has a lot of information in it, uh, and recognize that not every substance is going to take a longer time to boil than to melt, and not every substance is going to have a very low slope for gas and a very high slope for liquid with solid in the middle. It's always going to be a little bit different, but you can always relate the characteristics of the temperature versus time graph to specific latent heat and specific heat capacity.